In last week's electric bike video, I designed and made the rear pulley for the rear wheel at the back here. And it's turned out pretty nice. Hopefully with this new camera angle, it doesn't look like it's been spray painted because uh, that would have been a pretty stupid idea. Now at the end of last week's video, I briefly mentioned that I was going to redesign the motor mount system uh, to utilize a dual pulley stage step down rather than a single stage step down. Now I've looked and thought quite hard about how I'm going to do this two stage step down and I've come to the conclusion that it just isn't going to fit on the rear here. Uh, there were a number of other issues with the design of it being mounted at the rear here, as well as not being able to fit in two stage step down. Uh, because there was only one mounting point, um, there was potential of the whole system twisting, uh, which was actually a design flaw with the previous versions of electric bikes. Um, so it could twist on this bit and then the arm could swing into the spokes, uh, which I definitely don't want to happen. The other day I was looking at the bike uh, with the belt mounted around the pulley as you can see here and I was just moving the belt around and I found out that if you hold the belt at the right angle and the right tension it doesn't touch the frame which might be able to allow a mid-drive system. Now on a conventional uh, mid-drive electric bike they usually drive the chain to the rear sprocket um, however as I've previously said in my other video um, I would rather not do that and just stick to the belt system for a number of different reasons. So maybe I can get away with mounting the motor and all the pulleys inside the frame here. Anyway, I think I've done enough talking for this introduction. So uh, let's jump into the CAD software and make a design. To design this new mount, which will sit inside the frame, I first had to model a bit more of the frame. This was not only important to gauge the space for the motor, but I also plan to utilise the bottle mounting holes to add strength and prevent the mount from twisting on the tubes. The position of the drive pulley is important to keeping the belt away from the frame, so this had to be fixed. I then realised that the motor could squeeze in just below the drive pulley and set about designing these mounting plates. The power from the motor would be transmitted to the main drive pulley via an additional small belt on the opposite side. This is where the first stage of the step down ratio occurs. There is a 20 tooth pulley on the motor and a 40 tooth pulley on the shaft, giving a 2 to 1 ratio. Then on the other end of the shaft is another 20 tooth pulley which drives the belt to the large 180 tooth pulley on the rear wheel, giving a 9 to 1 ratio and a total motor to rear wheel ratio of 18 to 1. This should result in a top speed of about 33 miles per hour compared to the previous 38 miles per hour of the version 3 e-bike but it will have a lot more torque for hill climbs and wheelies. I then had to figure out all the holes for the bolts, plate spacers, wires and the VESC speed controller, as well as designing the 3D printable clamp blocks for the vertical seat post and the bracket for the bottle mounting holes, whilst also making sure that the lithium ion battery packs would still fit inside the frame. It was then time to CNC cut the plates from 6mm aluminium. When I was making the pulley last week, I ran into an issue with the CNC cutting where I changed the cutting bit halfway through and it misaligned a few holes. So in this cut, I decided to use the same three millimeter cutting bit for the whole plate. I decided to cut one plate at a time in case I ran into any issues, but it proved to be pretty successful. Oh, and check out this awesome slow motion footage of the spindle at 24,000 RPM. It was then a case of starting the 3D printer to make the brackets whilst I tap threaded all the holes and inserted the bearings. I first mounted a 3D printed bottle holder bracket and then proceeded to mount the plates either side. This bottle mount bracket was printed from strong PETG plastic from my filament sponsor, 3D Prints UK. But the rear tube clamp was printed from PLA plastic. The reason why the rear clamp blocks are currently printed from PLA plastic is because I wanted to prototype them before using PETG plastic and I wasn't 100% sure if the angle of the tube in my design was correct. But it seemed to fit quite well. I then temporarily mounted the motor to check how it fit and I say temporarily as I need to modify the length of the motor, specifically the large section out the rear, which is designed to mount aircraft propellers to. But I'd rather be able to spin the pedals than to be able to mount a huge propeller to the side of the bike. I'm currently waiting on the small pulleys to arrive in the post, so I set about designing the battery mount. It's a very basic mount and isn't too different from the version 3 electric bike design. Essentially it bolts to the bottle mounting holes to prevent the battery twisting on the frame and then the batteries are simply velcro to this. I again decided to print this from 3D Prints UK PETG plastic filament to make sure it was strong enough to hold the weight of the battery, which actually isn't too much to ask as I'll run velcro straps around the battery and frame, creating a clamping strap around this whole mount. So I've had to move inside now because the weather outside has turned on me. 
so I apologize if there's any echo in the audio right now. I'm currently in my kitchen. So uh, let's have a sit down on these tiles. So this is as far as I've got this week. Uh, mounted the batteries, uh, finished the motor mount plates, and I've temporarily mounted a pulley on here. It's not actually a toothed pulley, it's a roller pulley. Uh, so it can't be used to drive the rear, rear wheel just yet. However, it shows pretty well how the belt is going to be run around the frame. As you can see, there's a slot here and there will be another roller pulley mounted in this slot uh, using a T-nut, uh, slot, T-slot nut. Uh, and what that will do is be used to tension the belt. So it will hold the belt at about that angle and uh, you know make sure it's at the right tension. Although this looks almost complete, there's still quite a lot to do. Uh, for example, I need to make uh, these standoffs or the spaces between the two plates. Uh, I'll most likely be using a lathe to make these uh, because I want them to be exactly the same length and also uh, perfectly square on the edges so that the two bearings are perfectly aligned and there's no issues with the drive shaft. I also need to wire up all the electronics for the speed controller. Um, I need to add hall sensors to the motor. Uh, I mount these externally so it's not really an issue. Uh, and I also need to wire in a twist grip throttle up on the handlebars. Now I want to address a few things about this power system that I've chosen to go for and built uh, because a lot of people have been suggesting other types of power systems and I want to just explain why I've chosen to go for this. Probably the most common suggestion is to go for a 1000 watt hub motor which is a huge motor that sits in the hub of the rear wheel. Now these systems uh, are relatively cheap. Here in the UK you can buy a 1000 watt hub motor uh, with a speed controller for about 180 pounds which is about 250 300 dollars uh, and they work pretty well my friend quite a few of my friends actually have them and they do about 30 to 32 miles per hour on a 50 volt battery uh, which is actually the same speed as what this bike is going to be designed to do the only issue why i don't like hub motors is that they weigh a lot and that's not a huge issue but the fact that they weigh a lot on the rear wheel is a big issue. If I ever want to take this bike off road, it would be quite nice to have a well-balanced bike. Uh, for example, going over bumps and stuff, you don't want to have all the weight on the rear wheel. Uh, so having all the weight centralized is a better solution. I'm not sure exactly how much the weight of this system is going to be in comparison to a hub motor setup, uh, but I have actually weighed the bike uh, before building this setup, so I will weigh it at the end and do a comparison. The other reason why I've chosen to go for this over a 1000 watt hub motor is that although they do the same speed, this motor actually outputs 4 kilowatts, or it peaks at about 3.95 kilowatts I've previously measured it at. Now for those of you that probably own electric bikes with 4 kilowatt hub motors, you'll probably be screaming at your screen saying, but my 4 kilowatt hub motor does 60 miles per hour. Yes it does, but this, because this is geared to 32 miles per hour, the torque is absolutely insane. So because of this really high torque uh, through the pulley ratio, I can change it if I want to do 60 miles per hour. But how often would you want to do 60 miles per hour on a pedal bike? Not very often. So I might as well gear it to a lower speed, which I would more commonly do, but then be able to ride up hills a lot quicker and be able to hopefully wheelie it. The other drive system that a lot of people have suggested uh, is to mount the motor uh, so that it comes in contact with the rear tyre and basically is a roller on the rear tyre. And although this solution has worked in the past, I've seen quite a few different electric bike products that use this um, way of powering the rear wheel, it only really works for low power systems, like maybe 250, maybe 500 watt at, at a push. Um, the reason why it has issues is that uh, it obviously wears the tyre down uh, because it's essentially running a sandpaper roller on the rear wheel and also you can't output four kilowatts through a bit of sandpaper onto a bit of rubber because that would smell quite bad. The other issue is that as soon as the tyres get wet or get sandy or dusty or muddy it now reduces the friction between the motor and the tyre which obviously caused traction issues. Whereas with a belt, uh, friction isn't really an issue because the teeth are engaged into the pulley. So even if this pulley gets wet, it's not going to cause any issues with the belt slipping. Uh, so I can put a lot more uh, torque through the belt rather than having a roller on the rear tire. 
I hope this explains my chosen method of powering the rear wheel. Uh, if I see any more comments, then I apologize if I don't reply. I've tried to explain this as well as I can in my video. Um, so that's the end of this week's video. Uh, as I explained next week, I'll be doing all the finishing touches, electronics, spacers. I need to shorten the motor uh, can. And uh, then I think it will be ready for a, a test ride, which I honestly can't wait for. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. And a huge, huge thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me. You guys make these weekly videos possible. And if you wish to support me on Patreon, please click the link down in the description below. I post various behind the scenes uh, photos and occasionally videos on my projects. So a huge, huge thanks to my patrons. And I guess that's it. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.